So today I wanted to go over how to target. Uh, somebody asked how to target for dentists, so let's quickly go over that. Um, a lot of it comes down to what campaign you're actually trying to run, what you're actually trying to have as your objective. Um, are you just trying to get out there that the dentist exists? Are you trying to get customers? What are you doing? So we're going to start with just showing that the dentist exists. All right. So a great way to do this, uh, I'm sure you've seen Frank Kern's stuff out there. Um, I've actually been doing this longer than he has, or at least put it out there. But um, yes, this is a well-known traffic area and secret of you put out a bunch of videos, you get people to watch them, and then you go ahead and retarget them with offers. So it sounds pretty simple, but this is exactly how you want to do it. So when you're setting up an ad, go in here and you're going to want to do video views because you want people to watch it. Uh, you can also do engagement. You can do probably just engagement or video views unless you want to go back into brand or, or reach. These are literally you want to do not much of anything except for have a self-qualifying ad. And what that is is the ad in itself is going to be the people that you want to then um, take some kind of an action and you don't want Facebook to really have much of any say. So you don't want Facebook to go in and say, hey, I want people that usually engage on stuff or that usually watch videos because this is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to sit here and say, okay, these are people that like to click off onto other things. These are people like to engage. These are people that like to actually um, watch videos. These are people that actually want to put in their information for lead generation. Uh, now, of course, lead generation, you're probably going to use conversions or lead generation but um, you know that's that's the stuff that we're going to get into just a minute here. So we're going to start. I'm going to do video views. You can also do brand awareness and reach if you have no idea who your audience is and you're ready to just throw out a couple grand and try it out, see what happens. So uh, when we do video views, we're going to go down. You can do an A/B test if you want. Um, I don't really do the campaign yet. I know it's going to be switched over soon, so that's going to be a fun one to get used to. Um, so when you come down here, this one right here is just showing the United States. So I just did dentists in Virginia. I'm going to pop this address in. Sorry, I'm not affiliated with this dentist or anything like that. So these guys, if you're watching, I apologize. All right, we're just going to set it to probably around five miles or so. Um, so you see that it jumped down to 240,000 people, right? So your dentist probably is gonna have some kind of parameters around it. I would not touch anything down, where did they move it? Right here, for demographics, literally would not touch anything in these. Especially starting out, you do not know who is actually gonna interact with your content the best. Um, it could be somebody looking for their kids, it could be somebody looking for uh, a spouse or a wife or a grandparent or anything that you're actually looking for and it's not themselves but it's somebody else that was like hey wait a minute I just said somebody asked me about a dentist see these guys on here I might go try them out then I might recommend them to other people blah blah, blah. you know many different case scenarios so you don't know exactly who is going to be your target customer at the end uh, that's actually going to get the information from possibly somebody else that sees your ad so that's why we want these ads to kind of be self-qualifying in the beginning you're going to send them multiple videos that are in sequence so that way you can have people that watch the first video of course if somebody watches that video they're going to be interested in your content because nobody's going to sit there and watch a video that's a minute three minutes five minutes ten minutes long that they're you know they're not interested if they're, if they're watching that video um, they're definitely interested People that are not interested are not going to sit there that entire time and watch your videos. So we're going to go through here. Uh, let's just say you're trying to get down your audience. So you want it more like 50,000 to 100,000 people. Um, so in that case, we're just going to throw in some parameters just to see what we can kind of get to. Um, does your imaging have mostly women in it? Is it mostly men? Um, who kind of interacts with your content better? You're going to, of course, if this is your first time, you're going to find that out with putting out tests, um, put out... $50, $100 for each ad that you're putting out there. Let it run for a week or two and see who's interacting with the ad, who's actually doing anything, really. Um, Facebook will kind of optimize it on the back end, but uh, that's not long enough for Facebook to really see it and say, I know exactly who your customer is and put it in front of them. So you're going to still get pretty good unbiased data um, that shows, hey, these individuals interacted with your content because Facebook put it in front of everybody looking to see who interacted and then put it in front of those individuals more. But you haven't really gotten to that point yet. I mean, there's some of that, but uh, for the most part, you're going to actually have individuals that it's going to put it out to everybody in your audience because right now we haven't really done any narrowing of targeting other than just age right here. 
Um, if we wanted to do, say, one ad and we wanted to just go female, we could do women. If we wanted to just go male, we could do it uh, men, of course. Um, it does bring down your audience size quite a bit, as you can see, because you're just narrowing it down. And the problem with it is Facebook actually looks at it and says, hey, wait a minute, you know exactly who your customer is, especially if you're coming in here and you're doing, you know, um, let's just go with, oh, where's financial, there we go, financial income, let's just say we put this in here, right? Of course, it brings it down to 23,000 people, but Facebook looks at it and says, oh, you know exactly who you want, and this applies for anything that you add here, even the age, even men, women, anything that you put here, Facebook says, oh, you know exactly what you want, so we're going to put it in front of those individuals, but since you know exactly who you want, we're going to charge you more for it. So chances are, it's not every single time, of course, but most of the tests that I've done, the businesses went out better by not having any of these interests in there. Um, you have the ad that self-qualifies, then you have the other ads that you're going to put in front of those people that were self-qualified from the first ad, so you don't need any of this criteria really filled in other than if you're just trying to narrow down your audience a little bit. Um, so that's why I really wouldn't recommend any of these interests and behaviors because your ads are going to do the job for you. Facebook has retargeting that then the retargeting is going to say, hey, wait a minute, we're going to go ahead and put up here that uh, we have a custom audience of people that watched 50% of the first video, second video, and third video, or maybe just the first and second, or maybe even just the one video you put in front of individuals. Um, and then that's gonna be more of your targeting down as you get into your conversions. So of course, Facebook is gonna charge you a little bit more because you know exactly who your audience is, but your audience is self-qualified by watching a certain criteria, or maybe they engage with a post or something that you want to remarket them with and retarget them. So those individuals are gonna see your content, interact with it, some way, whether they watch the video, they commented on there, something to show they actually are interested, and then you put an offer in front of those individuals. So that's the only really targeting you're gonna have here, and then you create a lookalike audience based off of that first audience, and it's gonna find more people that look like those individuals. So um, if you go through there, and uh, it's gonna be in other videos and stuff, as we create lookalike audiences, you'll see that you know, it's going to be 1% or 2% or 3%. And what that is is of the different countries. So if you do 1% of uh, America, it's always going to be the same thing. I think it's 2.2 million or so in uh, America if you do 1% lookalike audience. So those individuals that look like your current audience. And then you take that audience and you narrow it down because you're saying, hey, I want people within a, whoop, there it is, five mile radius of my business. So can you see how this kind of self-qualifies, this kind of deals with itself internally? So you don't actually have to do much of anything. And that's why all these gurus that are like, hey, you have to you know, have your targeting on track and this and that. If your client's not willing to actually spend some money, get out in front of their own audience, is what's the worst thing that happens? People see that their business exists locally. If they're not willing to put that out there in front of their audience, or if you're the business, you shouldn't be running ads. I mean, you shouldn't put mailers out there. You shouldn't do billboards. You shouldn't do commercials. You shouldn't do anything. Literally should not spend a dollar on ads if you're not willing to waste the entire amount of your money. If you put in $2,000 on here, be prepared to waste $2,000. You hope that you make 20 from it, but be prepared to lose $2,000, okay? And by 20, I don't mean 20 bucks. I mean $20,000 or something higher uh, for a return. But you're not going to see that right away. It's going to slowly build over time unless you're putting those offers and you're self-qualifying, which is even more money that you're going to put on top of those original audiences that you're creating. And if you don't use those audiences, they go away. Because when you're creating those audiences, it goes, hey, maybe uh, people that saw your website, went to your website and clicked through uh, or saw a certain percentage of the video, but in the last 20, 30 um, some of them are 180 days, some of them are 365 days, depending on the exact audience you're creating. But Facebook's going to say, hey, you know, you picked the last 20 days, you spent all this money getting these people in those audiences, and then if you don't use them for the next 20 days, you just wasted all of that money. And then you're actually wasting the money because you're not putting an offer in front of anyone that actually came and responded to your ads or anything you did. If you went on your page and you put posts on your page and you wanted to run an ad to people that responded to posts on your page, which I don't know why you do that. Um, and we'll get into kind of how you can organically help your Facebook uh, grow later on in another video. But honestly, guys, do not be doing what everybody else out there tells you that there's some secret to targeting that literally, you know, you put in here and you go into interests and because it's a dentist and you go into family and you go into actually probably not the best one in family. Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? 
Do do do. So I mean, I don't use these very much. I think it actually might be in behaviors. For those that just moved. Oh, come on. Is it? Uh, oh, it might be in life events. Do do do. Yeah, recently moved. So those that maybe recently moved, you want to get in front of those. Put an ad out there that has something about recently moving in it. You know, uh, write your copy of your ad that shows that, hey, have you moved to a new area? We'd love to support you as a new person here in this area, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's horrible copy. You'd, of course, want to make a way better copy than that. Uh, you want to sit down and actually see who you're going to target and go through there. But, I mean, do that. Okay, so everybody else, yeah, it's not going to be a whole audience of people um, that probably just moved there that you're going to get in front of, but there's a good chance when you go in demographics and you go here and let's just do this. Life events, recently moved. I mean, what do we go down to? Fewer than 1,000 people. You need customers in your local area, okay? And this is Virginia Beach, so this is probably a pretty highly populated area as well. So, I mean, we're talking about five miles in Virginia Beach. Now, I'm not sure exactly how populated this part of it is, so don't hold me to that. But I know Virginia Beach, that's where my parents kind of grew up, so I know that area is pretty populated. So you're talking about less than 1,000 people that Facebook knows of that just moved to that area. Facebook is going to charge you an arm and a leg to get in front of those 1,000 people because those people are also getting ads from e-commerce stores. They're getting ads from literally anything that Facebook has ads for, software companies, all that kind of stuff. And if you're looking for high net worth individuals, if you put that in as well, and then you're looking for people that recently moved, high net worth individuals, blah, 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 all these different targeting points, Facebook's going to be like, man, you know exactly who you want. These other people that are selling high-end items know exactly who they want. Who's going to spend more? Okay, you got somebody drop shipping a product or selling a product on their store that is $2,000 and let's just use the one of, um, it's a couch. Let's just say somebody's drop shipping a couch to somebody's home and maybe it's overstock and they have way too much funding that year and they're like, I just need to blow an ad budget. You're not going to compete with them. So why not have your ad do everything for you, spend less money. Yeah, your audience is a little bigger, but that's why you can spend a lot longer too and not blow your entire audience in the first week you know, of spending $300 because you went through those less than 1,000 people like that. So didn't want to get too much into this, but I wanted to show you exactly how to kind of target on here. Um, again, your placement, it really depends on what your ad is. Um, so this one, we're of course doing videos, so it's going to self go through there and say, hey, Messenger, you can't do the videos on. I mean, depending on your length, depending on a lot of the different stuff, it may not be in the uh, feeds versus the stories, all that kind of stuff for your, your length of actual videos. But I just put automatic placement to begin with because you want your message in front of as many people as you can. Okay. And of course, if you guys don't know, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So you can he see here that you run the same ad in the feed or the story um, on Instagram at the same time. So maybe you want to take off audience network. Okay. We just take that one off then. Perfect. But if you don't really care that you're just putting an ad in front of somebody and maybe it's cheaper on audience network, put it on audience network, you know, put it on everything that it's going to go ahead and get you clicks on. If you look on there and you're like, Hey, there's a bunch of audience network and nobody's interacted with the video. We haven't gotten many views. Cool. Then we might come in here to edit placement. We'll come down here and be like, all right, let's turn off audio audience network. We didn't really get anything in marketplace. Uh, suggest the videos. No, uh, of course not right column because it's a video, but you know, maybe these are the top ones that we saw based on our data after we ran some ads. Cool, then use those. But until you know that, I just put it on automatic placement and then go from there. And then you might run this and then your cost skyrockets and you're not getting the same amount of people on your retargeting audiences that are opting in. I mean, there's so many different things to play with, which is why it's such a great system. Same thing kind of on Google, and we're going to go into that in other videos. But I hope you guys can see why targeting is so important, and yet at the same time, there's really not much to it. The big thing is this, and say you want to do you know, the entire audience, you want to do anybody that's 19 through 65 plus, maybe we stop it at 64, and that's just way too big of an audience for you, the 220,000 people, go in here, click it, put in three miles. We just narrowed our audience down 100,000 people almost. Well, maybe we start with two miles. Yeah, this is a pretty highly dense area um, for what we're trying to hit there. 
So then two months, oh, I guess not that much, but um, either way, so I hope this video helps you with your targeting, uh, specifically with the first targeting where you're going through your videos and getting them out there, you're going through your ads that maybe have great copy and it's just an image that's trying to stop somebody in their tracks. Um, didn't want to make this too long, probably failed at that miserably, but I hope you guys gained a lot of value from this. Um, if you want to, leave more stuff in the comments that you want to hear about. I want to make a bunch of these videos. I think this thing actually didn't work because it came up and said it was only the built-in audio, so I apologize if the audio sucked on this. I'm going to try and work on that. So I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.